Okay. Here we are, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. First Maybe comes first. I have to tell you, you are so lucky today for two reasons. One, it's so clear in front of us, you're observing the mountains on the other side, on the Palestinian land. And of course, if it's night time, you will be able to see the lights of Jerusalem. See that dark patch further ahead? That's yeah. Jerusalem. Those are the houses of Jerusalem. It's not far. Very close. Okay. Don't do your faces. Sorry? Don't do your faces oh, no, if you're putting no. the mud. Yeah. It's crystal salt, yeah. Crystallized, yeah. I've got you. Where are you going?
Welcome to the Carrick Castle. And of course, in the ancient time, they used to refer to this place as Kier Harris. So this is an old name for the area. Of course, the castle we are in was first time built during the Crusader time in the year 1142. And it was built by somebody called Bayan or Bagan the Butler. <laughs> then it was given to Philippe de Melle who was in charge of the castle to roughly the early 60s of the 12th century. After which he gave the castle to his daughter, who was in charge of the administration of this castle till she got married to Rinori de Châtillon. And she was married to Rinori de Châtillon in the year 1176. What Rinori did actually, the moment he arrived in here, he started attacking the Muslim pilgrims and the Muslim caravans as they traveled in the neighborhood. And according to this, he ended up what was observed as a peace treaty taking place in between the two nations or the two authorities of that time. But as he received a message from the king of Jerusalem advising him to stop whatever he's doing, he referred to the, king's, to the king of Jerusalem by saying, you're the king in Jerusalem, I'm the king here, I do whatever I wish. And of course, due to the excessive attacks he did over the Muslim pilgrims and whoever traveled in the neighborhood, that what brought Saladin to the neighborhood to conquer and to defeat. And the first arrival of Saladin was in the early 80s, as he arrived in here and besieged the castle for the first time. And of course, it was the time when the son of Atinate, from her previous marriage, was about to be married, and it was the wedding night, the wedding party. So Saladin was besieging the castle, but he couldn't get through, he couldn't get inside, because after a while, the support came for the crusaders in this castle from the west. That's why he had to retreat. And in the history, there are three times by which Saladin besieged the castle, but it was in vain. Till in the year 1187, when he defeated the Crusaders in the Battle of Hattin, he marched, as I said today, as we were coming from the north. He did the same thing. He stopped in that valley and keep moving, kept moving till he arrived in here, besieging the castle for 10 months, after which the garrison of the castle surrendered to him. And with this, we observe the time when the Muslims had the opportunity to capture the castle, which is after the garrison lost the water and the food. Because, to tell you the truth, as we observe, from the western side we are observing a very steep valley that keeps running all the way towards the Dead Sea. From the southern part as well there is a valley and from the eastern part as well. So, it will be impossible for anybody to attack except from the northern wall. And as we take a look at the width and the way the, the northern wall has been built, we do observe that it's well built, well fortified, it has the arrow slits, and there are different techniques through which they use to shoot the enemy outside without being hit inside. And this is how we observe it. Of course, we passed the dry moat, which was part of the scheme, and of course the idea of a drawbridge as well, as it was established on the outer side in this direction. So we recognize now the castle as a stronghold where nobody can attack. And of course, they didn't have the modern technology of hitting with missiles and so on. Or what they have the cannonballs, catapults, arrow sleds, arrows to shoot, that's what they had at that time. 
So whoever was inside was well protected, whoever was outside was, let's say, enduring everything. Passed by the guys and said, Sharon! <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's looking, what's that crazy person doing? <laughs> okay. Now, a third. You see, it's always a German soldier. First comes first. Oh. Welcome to Petra. Thank you. <laughs> Is that okay. where we are? That's where we are, and we are standing in front of the most beautiful facade in the city. They call it the treasury. Who calls it like this? The Bedouins. When the first traveler came into this place called John Perkhart in 1812, this place was a secret place. Nobody recognized the routes running into it. And out of like disguising like a Muslim, and out of speaking a story that he wants to do a, a sacrifice towards God, and wherever there is a shrine for a prophet or a companion of the prophet or whatever, so the local Bedouins invited him to take him to the shrine of the Nabi Haru, Prophet Aaron, because this is how Muslims perceive Aaron as a prophet. He's the brother of Moses and he's a prophet. So he was 
brought into the city and he was taken all the way till the tomb of Aaron went one way or another. But when the first travelers after John Burkhardt arrived in the site, I'm speaking of archaeologists, historians and so on, so their source of information were the Bedouins. So they asked the Bedouins about the names of places. And that's why they said this is called the Khaznet Faraon. What was that? Khaznet Faraon. What's the meaning of Khaznet Faraon? The treasury of the Pharaoh. Why do they say so? Because they believe that Pharaohs of Egypt, the masters of black magic, they carved this by magic and deposited their wealth inside. So, immediately, those first people thinking of gold, they, as they had the pistols and rifles, they started shooting whatever the wealth was in there. And that's why we see the bullet holes in so many different places. Okay, this is a reflection on the eye of gold. But there was no gold. This is a real treasure for Jordan because many people voted for Petra to be one of the seven wonders because they wanted to see this or they came and saw this facade.
met with Prince Faisal, the son of Sharif Hassan. Would you like to approach here? Mm -hmm. So we'll give room to the others to move. Lawrence met with Prince Faisal here in the desert. They set the and arranged for the attacks over the Ottomans. And from here they moved and marched south direction, southwest, in order to attack Aqaba, which was the first liberated land within what we call Jordan today. And that's why when we arrive in Aqaba, you are going to see a flagpole with the flag of the revolution, as I said previously. 